Hello and welcome back. Uh, here we're going to do our first problem now looking at a single population test on a mean. Uh, this time sigma is unknown so now we're going to be estimating uh, the population standard deviation with the sample standard deviation and you'll see that very much of this type of exercise is the same as all of the other ones that we've done before. Uh, there's just that one little difference that we, now we're going to be using the t-distribution instead of the z-distribution. And so there's one more little piece of information that's required, and that is what variant of the t-distribution do we need? Uh, unlike the z-distribution, of which there's only one, uh, the t-distribution has many, many, many variants, all dependent on the particular sample size. So we'll have to calculate degrees of freedom, and it's really not a complicated step. Uh, and so we'll, uh, we'll just go through this exercise, and you'll see how similar it is uh, as we go through. Right, so red light cameras are an effective deterrent to reducing the number of people who run red lights at intersections. However, they can be expensive to install and maintain. So for these reasons, they are only installed at intersections where there tends to be the most accidents caused by drivers running red lights. So let's assume the threshold number of accidents uh, is 10 per year. And so here I'm just going to highlight what might be important information. Uh, any more than this warrants a, a camera be installed. So at one location, researchers found the average number of incidents over that 10-year period, uh, or over a 10-year period was 10.6. Uh, based on the data, they immediately submit a recommendation to install a red light camera at this intersection. After all, 10.6 is greater than 10. So. The threshold is 10 per year. The 10 year average was 10.6. So what, uh, what are we gonna do? Is this the correct decision? Well, 10.6 is greater than 10, but we have to keep in mind that that is just based on a sample of information. It may not necessarily be representative of the entire population. So uh, it may or may not be correct, we don't know, but we do have to go through the proper testing procedure uh, to, to see if we have evidence to show that this is a valid claim. So let's, uh, let's go through. We'll start off, we'll formulate the null and alternative hypotheses. We're testing a population mean, and we're testing a hypothesized value of 10. Now we are going to install a red light camera if we have evidence to show that the average number of accidents is greater than 10. So that shows up in our alternative hypotheses. Our null hypothesis is that it is not greater than 10, so less than or equal to. Uh, we don't have a level of significance, so here we'll pick one, uh, let's say just 0.05 don't need to pick anything too different uh, and let's go ahead with the with the test so here we'll uh, we have access to their data so we have our sample standard deviation was 1.19 sample mean was 10.6 so our calculation here for the test statistic it looks so similar to a z-test that if you were to use the wrong formula you probably wouldn't even make a mistake the only difference of course is this right here we have sigma if we know what sigma is if we don't know what sigma is we use s but otherwise the calculations are going to be the same as long as you put the right numbers in the right places so our sample mean was 10.6 minus hypothesized value is 10 our sample standard deviation is 119 and our sample size this was over a 10 year period so this is 10 uh, yes 10 square root of 10 Okay, now let's find that calculator. So 10.6 minus 10 divided by 1.19 over uh, square root of 10 equals, so I get 1.59, 1.59. Okay, that's it. Uh, now we can go and use the p-value approach or a critical value approach. So let's go to our tables and uh, look up this value. Oh, but before we do, we need to know what the t distribution are we working with? Well, if n is equal to 10, degrees of freedom for these exercises are just n minus one. So 10 minus one, so we have nine degrees of freedom. And you'll see when we go to our t distribution, that very first column now is consumed with the degrees of freedom. So we have a lot less 
detail about uh, the t distribution as we do the z distribution because again there's only one z distribution so the whole table is full of information about that one distribution now every one of these rows corresponds to a different slightly different variant of the t distribution so for our exercise our, our distribution is the one that corresponds with nine degrees of freedom so now what that means is all i need to even look at is this one row of t statistics and their corresponding probabilities. We can now actually just completely ignore everything else in that table because it's irrelevant for this exercise. The only thing that's relevant is what I've got highlighted there in yellow. So we want to find our, our test statistic which was 1.59. So if I go through uh, 1.59 is somewhere in between these two values here, which means our probability is somewhere between 0.05 and 0.1. Now looking at this table, what information is it giving us? This one, unlike the Z table, this one is giving us an upper tail probability. We're doing an upper tail test, so that happens to be the probability that we want. So our p-value is going to be right in between these, between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. So coming back to our exercise, I have a p-value that is less than 0 0.1, greater than 0 0.05. So can we draw our conclusion? Okay, it is greater than 0 0.05. So this does give us sufficient evidence to uh, not reject uh, the null hypothesis. So what does that mean? Uh, is this the correct decision? No, it most certainly was not, even though the sample um, mean is greater than the hypothesized value. Uh, we are unable here to support uh, the alternative hypotheses. I cannot say that that represents that that's a statistically significant um, increase uh, over the, the threshold of 10. So we do not reject the null hypotheses. Uh, there's no reason to put a, at least no statistically valid reason to put uh, our red light cameras here. Okay, good. So that's all there is to it. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.